Hi and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to show you how to make those modular accessories that I created for the wood and stone piers. I gotta say these are absolutely so much fun to work with. They give you a lot of options and they're surprisingly easy to make. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you step by step how to make each of these. It's going to be the modular nets, the pilings, as well as the rope coils. Any questions, please feel free to ask me down below. Don't forget you can also email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. That's it for now. I'll see you later. Bye. Because of the various supplies, please make sure to check the description below to get a list of what you'll need for each variation of these accessories. For the nets, what you want to do is get a package of cheesecloth. Now, this is something you can find either at your grocery store in the cooking accessories aisle, or you can very easily find it at Dollar Tree as well. The next thing you want is a container that has an edge to it. So in this case, you're going to take a container and you're going to cover it with, I used press and seal in this case. The press and seal is going to keep the netting from sticking to the container. So find something with a nice edge and make sure you cover it with press and seal so that you have an easy release after this is dried. Then what you want to do is take some of the cheesecloth, do not peel it apart completely, you want it to be a double layer, and cut out a rectangular size of the piece. As you can see here on the mat, it's about five inches long by there and about three to four inches wide. The next thing you're going to do is make a mixture of a medium tone gray acrylic paint along with some Elmer's glue and water. What you're going to do is mix this together and add the water until you get a consistency of about whole milk. Then you're going to dip the rectangular piece of cheesecloth into this mixture and wring it out so that it looks like, as pictured here, wrung out and reshaped a little bit. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Now going back to your container with the press and seal on top of it, if you want to have the net draping over the edge, you're going to place the cheesecloth along the edge of the container and having a pile on the upper part of it so that you have this look and you just sort of move the cheesecloth around to get the draping appearance. If you don't want to have it draping over, put the cheesecloth into the middle of your container and just have it look like a pile of fishing net that way instead. Allow the cheesecloth to dry completely and then what you should be able to do is just quickly and easily lift it off the container. The next thing you want to do is go and use some suede colored paint and you're going to do a dry brushing of this over the majority of the net so you start getting the lighter tones of what would be the ropes in the net itself. And when you go and do this, again, don't be too heavy handed. You don't want to have this completely changed color. You do want those grays to be present because it shows the folds off better and the deeper parts of the nets as well. Once that has dried, and of course I didn't get a picture of this, you're going to take vanilla ice cream and then hit the higher areas of the folds of the fabric just to really bring out the details and the edges in the net itself. When all of the paint has completely dried, flip your net over and basically glue either a penny or a washer to the bottom. This gives it a little bit of heft and weight to make sure it doesn't blow off the table on you and stays in place where you want it to be. And that's pretty much how you do these modular nets. Let's move on now to the pilings. To create the pilings, what you're going to want to find first are cake dowels. And these you can find in Walmart in their cake decorating section, and you can also find these online. The difference I have found with these particular style dowels is that they are far easier to cut and easier to work with. It is a softer wood. So my recommendation is try and get these dowels. If you cannot get these dowels, then by all means go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get some of their smaller dowels for this purpose. But what you're going to do is cut these dowels in varying lengths. Some are longer, some are medium size, and some are smaller. Once you have the various lengths cut, take your file and round off the edges, file them down so you get a nice smoothed as, as opposed to having the stuck up little bits that might happen from cutting these into different sizes. When you have everything filed and ready to go, you're going to want your hot glue gun as well as a sheet of clear plastic. Now this is a piece of plastic I got from my strawberry container. So you can use and repurpose a piece of plastic for this process. Then what you want to do is group your lengths into groupings of three with a longer piece, a mid-sized piece, and a smaller piece. Once you have your groupings done, you're going to put a dollop of hot glue onto the plastic and then place your three posts next to each other, tall, medium, small, in a grouping that's sort of like a triangle. 
When your glue has cooled completely, take a pair of scissors and as close as you possibly can to the edge of the post, cut away any excess hot glue and plastic so that you have these freestanding pieces. And you can see here, tipped on its side, you can see there's that little bit of plastic on the bottom, but what you mostly see are the posts themselves. This is what's gonna help make them modular. In terms of the rope, you do have a couple of different options. What I would recommend is see if you can first get a hold of some baker's twine. Again, that's something you can find in the cooking accessories section in your grocery store. Similar idea at stores like Walmart or that type of thing. And you're going to use a little dollop of hot glue and wrap it around the post and then secure again with another little dollop of hot glue. This is one option for adding ropes to your pilings. I'll explain another one as we get further into the how-to for this particular thing. Once you have your baker's twine wrapped around, if you're going in that direction, what you are then going to do is take the paint color pavement, create a very thin wash using just water, and paint all of the posts, including the twine, with this wash and then allow it to dry completely before we move on to the other colors. Once everything's dry, you're first gonna go back in with suede and you're going to do a dry brushing on the pilings themselves. Do not do it on the rope area yet. When that's done, you're then going to stipple olive green in between the posts and various areas, again, to show algae growth on these. And that's what you're gonna do with these two paint colors. Now for the final wash on the pilings, you have a couple options. You could first use the Citadel Agrix shade here that I have in the picture, or what you could use is a nutmeg mixed with water and again, make it a thin wash out of that. And what you're going to do is completely coat the pilings with this wash or with the particular Citadel shade here. And that is going to help give it more of the wood-like look that's been going on as you've seen with our wooden dock. And the other option here as for ropes is using the florist wire that has been covered with brown floral tape, wrapping it around your posts, using hot glue to secure them, and then going back over both varieties of rope, whether it is the baker's twine or whether it is the wire covered option. And you're going to do a dry brushing with the suede again, strictly on the rope sections to bring out the details of the grooves in the ropes themselves. When it comes to these rope accessories, what I used was florist wire covered with floral tape. Now they do sell this pre-wrapped and it's something that's a little bit easier for those who may not have the hang of wrapping wire with the floral wrap. If you haven't seen my ropes and riggings video yet, check that out and I do show you how to wrap the wire with the tape. But again, they do sell this pre-wrapped now. So taking your wire, regardless of whether you got the pre-wrapped or whether you wrapped it yourself, you're going to cut a length of this wire out and then using the end of a pen, and wrap it around a few times over so you get a coil of rope. Then what you're gonna do with this coil of rope is take that suede color again and you're going to dry brush over your coil and you wanna make sure you're very light-handed with this because you don't wanna get the suede color into everything. You want it just to glide above so that you get to see the textures and the details and it gets a more rope-like appearance because of adding this to it. And then once again, you can go back to using either that nutmeg wash or the Citadel shade that I showed you before and you can treat your coils of rope with these options for your washes and let them dry completely and that's pretty much how you get your rope coils you can also have fun by changing the shapes a little bit some are more round some are more oval you can even just make it look like an unwound pile of rope if you so choose and here you have some final stills to take a look at how everything looks all set up and ready to go for gameplay. The thing that's great about having these modular pieces is that you can create a look of your own every single time you go and use these. You don't have to use them all at once, you can use them one at a time if you so choose. The nice thing is, is that it gives you options, which is great for gameplay, and it also gives you more to work with in the long run. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. You can also reach me at my email address, thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. I did also just start up a Twitter account, so come and find me over there at The Crafting Muse as well. And for now, this is it for today. I hope it's something you can put to use. And don't forget to like this if you've liked this video, and make sure to subscribe as well. Thanks so much, and have a great one. No bloopers. Sorry. Not today. Bye.